an introduction to our next session. And of course, now we have Andrea. Andrea, are you there? Do you hear us loud and clear, Andrea? Great. I will leave that communication to Bawani. And uh, we have Andrea and Bawani for this session. It's time for Uncommon Courage. Over to you, Bawani. Hey, Andrea, just a sound check. You can hear us, right? But we can't hear you, right? Andrea, we can't hear you. She's not muted. No. Test, testing, yeah. testing. Yeah. All right, Andrea. So, guys, this is how it's going to happen. I'm going to talk to my laptop. Favorite thing, remember? But you guys look at the screen and, yeah, this is how we're going to do it, all right? So, let's get the ball rolling. Andrea, what can I say? Andrea is known as the digital conversationalist. Change agent, provocator, correct me if I got that wrong or correct, <laughs> passionate communicator and a social leader. And she's authored a couple of books. I knew her since APSC, that's the Singapore's convention in 2019, and I became a follower, or I should say a stalker. <laughs> I love her boldness, she's just so bold. And she challenges people and organizations to think differently. Today we are here exploring uncommon courage. So Andrea, it's good to have you here with us today in Malaysia while you are there in Thailand. It's great to be here and hi everyone. Happy Sunday morning. I hope you're having a great convention. I'm also glad you spoke in, in English and not Malay. I, uh, I hear that's a requirement these days. Masih, masih boleh lagi bertutur dalam bahasa Melayu tapi I'm not going to put everyone through the agony of me translating while they bear with me. So yeah, we are going to do this in English, not in Malay. Good. So, thanks Andrea for accommodating us and not, not expecting me to speak in English, um, in Malay. So, it's time for Uncommon Courage. I've read your book, so by the way, I have Andrea's book over here. I, I know I had to have it because I've been stalking her, remember? So, when she came out with this book, I found a way to get her book all the way from Thailand. So, and this, this book, right, um, how do I say? It's it's light reading, but at the same time, <coughs> deep, at least for me, why you will only know when, when you pick up this book. So this, this book really had me um, stop in my tracks. It had me question some things. And when I think I knew it, or I think I knew some things, I had to put a full stop and check myself whether I got it right. So yeah, thanks Andrea for these books. I really love them. Uh, I'm so pleased. Thank you. It really means so much to me and, and you've been wonderful because you didn't just take it and read it, you've also been feeding back to me and a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. So if someone, give, if someone gives you a book, make sure you, you tell them what, they, what you think of it because it, the, the feedback helps us all get better. But any, any insights or takeaways? Uh, yeah, there's, there's three um, that I marked for me. Um, so the first one was on self-empowerment and, and at that time... I, when I got this book, we, we had stuff that was happening around because it was COVID. And, and at least for me personally, the issue at that time was on governance and integrity within associations and corporations. So self-empowerment where it spoke about integrity, where you spoke about integrity, that's one. And then the next was social leadership, something that you are very um, known for, something that you stand up strongly about. And the first question that you asked was, are you ready to stand up? So <laughs> that made, made quite an impact on me because again, um, of certain situations that was happening around me at that time. And last, um, I mean, I'm not saying the others are less significant, but these were the ones that stood out. The last one was on self-empowerment. Because you started off again by saying, I have a reputation for being courageous. And I asked myself that, Am I? Am I courageous? Even to be on stage here today, I had to like gather my courage for the last few weeks since you spoke to me. Like, I'm going to speak to this lady with uncommon courage and I have to get all my courage up and ready to speak to you. Yeah, so those were the three topics that stood out to me. Nice, nice. So, um, Andrea, we're going to get this ball rolling by me asking you this. Um, you don't seem to have a problem with this. You don't have a problem or you don't see it as a challenge to stand up. 
can you give us the secret to standing up and speaking up about something you strongly believe in? You literally call a spade a spade. How do you do this? <laughs> um, it's not really easy to speak up, no matter who you are and how often you do it. So I think that's the first thing. It's always hard. So even when you do get the courage to, to speak up on the things that you really care about, it, it never gets easier. And I've been doing it all my life. So, But if I go back to you know, my early days, my, my family was a family where everyone had an opinion and no one was told to shush, especially young people. So I think I got some good practice in very early. And also, because when you can do that when you're young, you can make a fool of yourself, which I did a lot. Uh, but you learn, you learn how to speak up and have an opinion in a way that's appropriate to the room that you're in. So if there's any parents out there, I think one of the most important things you can do for your kids is give them the space and the confidence to speak up on the things that they care about. So when they become adults, they don't struggle so much. But then, you know, roll the clock forward to business, my first business experiences. And I had some really crazy, serious roles from a very young age. So my first job was in the army where, of course, you don't speak up. But of course I did it anyway. Uh, but the next job I was head of communications for an aerospace company at 22. And I was in a room with a lot of very older senior people. And I'd be sitting there in a meeting and I'd have a question and I'd just, I'd be, you know, you know so you're almost moving in your seat because you've got this question. But I didn't have the confidence to ask it because I thought I might look naive, I might be stupid, you know, I might be judged by the people. But then just a few minutes later somebody else would ask the that very same question and everyone in the room would go, wow, that's a really great question. And then I just started to decide to ask the question, even though I was uncomfortable, even though it could backfire on me or, you know, because it, it, it's, not about, it's not about that. It's just about building the confidence to ask the questions and put yourself in a position where you might make a fool of yourself, but it's more important to speak up. So ask the question, step up, speak up, you know, be the person that you want to be. I was, you know, have a vision for yourself and then work out what that vision looks like and the steps you need to make to achieve it and take the first step. Like everything, courage is a muscle and you've just got to build it. So, you know, uh, we, 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 too many of us, especially females, we've got all these voices in our head, you know, telling us that we're useless, that we're not worth, not, we're not worth it, you know, that, those sort of things where we're constantly our worst critic and, Shut that voice down and step forward and go out there and claim the life that you want for yourself. And it's, it's, it's our responsibility. Nobody else can do it for us. You know, so many people complain about their lives, but they haven't taken those steps. So it's, Thanks, it's the path Andrew. to success, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I mean, yeah, you mentioned it starts with us at home and then where we are, social, at work and all that. And it's interesting that you spoke about, you know, fidgeting on the seat because I've been fidgeting for a couple of months now and I didn't know whether I had the courage to bring this topic up but um, one of the things that you told me was Bawani, stand up and, you know, ask what you want to ask. So, I mean, summing up my courage to say this. So, I'm just going to say this. This is question, Andrea, is to you. That's a culture in Malaysia uh, where many of us or most of us, um, we are feel that we are forced to follow certain formula and we don't think, or I should say, I don't think that it's good for, for people or at least the audience here today. These are government and agency rulings that force us to comply to certain ways of doing things. And we can't escape because it's part of our, um, it's part of our environment or the environment that we are working in. We are forced to comply to these rulings, especially in the industry that we are in, the learning and development area. People are suffering, and when I say people, I'm talking about my friends who are trainers, coaches, facilitators, and speakers. There could be some of them in this room soon. Um, and, and because being a president when this started, and it, it, people still come and tell me stories, listening to people's, um, people telling me, Andrea upfront saying that, you know, let's call it, there's, there's fancy names to, to things that's being done. Um, let's call it a service charge. You know, the 200 ringgit that I need to pay out, or the, the 200 ringgit that I need to sacrifice, is a deciding factor between paying a utility bill or grocery bill for a week on the table. And, and I'm talking about not those big giants, not the jaws and not the sharks, 
in the sea, but I'm talking about what we Malaysians know as um, ikan bilis, the anchovies in the sea. And these people are struggling. And hearing them, this, this, this is why I'm saying it's been bottled up in me. It's just, um, it's, it's just really painful, Andrea, sometimes listening to all these stories. So my question to you is this, people are suffering. We are suffering. When I say we, it's because I'm also part of this industry. I sometimes feel we are being bullied. We are really being bullied because we are in this environment and in a very courteous way we have been told, follow the rules or find something else to do. So what do we do, Andrea? What do I do? Do we comply because it's government ruling? Or do we stand up with facts, not hearsay and say, hey, we are also experts. We are the ones in this industry. Do listen to us. What do we do? Do we just comply? Or if we stand up, how do we stand up? I never comply. Uh, look, I, 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 really, uh, I really feel what you're saying because of government, government bureaucracy, all that sort of stuff, um, all, all the way through to corruption, right, is, is very prevalent in Asia. One of the things, when I was in, based out of Singapore, I didn't go for the government contracts for the same reason. I don't like the bureaucracy, uh, how public it is as well, you know, what your fees are. I just, I just didn't like that. So I, I just always avoided it. But I think in a country like Malaysia, it's very difficult to avoid uh, those those sort of situations where, with the government, right? Yeah, so you, you don't have a choice. So the best thing you can do is to come together as a community. You know, 40, 50 of you come together, sit down, talk about it. What's the issue? What's the problem? And then come up with a better solution but, the, but you've also got to talk to your clients because if you're suffering, they're suffering. If every single person in this room went out and spoke to 10 clients and did a sort of a survey and you could bring it back together and have some comprehensive feedback and then um, come up with a solution and go and present it to the minister, but be solution focused, but the biggest power that you've got is the numbers of people sitting in this room today. So work together to find the solution and then go and get a change, but make, make the minister feel like it was their answer rather than yours. And then, you, then you'll have an even better chance because they're all ego-driven, right? You got that right, ego-driven. So, Andrea, um, how about when it's sensitive, um, sensitive issues? How do we tackle that? So, I, I pick up on a lot of sensitive issues, whether it's the climate crisis or inequality, diversity. Like, I, I'm... I, I'm I position myself as a voice for humanity and all life on earth. So I talk about lots and lots and lots of things and because they need to be spoken about. Um, we can't be quiet. But to be successful at it, and I'm not saying I'm successful at it, I make mistakes, I get it wrong, uh, but I'm, I'm taking the risk of getting it wrong because the message is more important than... I'm not there for my ego. I'm there, I'm there for the message. So first of all, take your ego out of it. Um, but the other thing is being very, very objective. So you've got to take the emotions out of it. If, if everyone's just talking from an emotional space, it's, it's very difficult to listen to. So I always say, if a person hears from their heart and you speak from your mind, you can't reach them. But if you speak from your mind to a person who hears from their heart, you can't speak, you, you can't speak to them either, you can't reach them. So we've all got to learn to bring our minds and hearts together and speak from both, because when we do that, we're like, we're like this one in the middle where we've got the logical people on that side and the creative, spiritual people on that side. If we can put ourselves in the middle, we can reach both people and bring people together because, of course, we need to solve the divisions that exist in society. But you've got to take the emotions out of it, and it's difficult. You know, this year for me, from what's going on in the world, my emotions have been very, very strong, and I've been working really hard to get them out of it so I can come back in and be, uh, have that objective voice. So. The other thing is really, really, really important to understand the issue from all angles. So a lot of people only put their own point of view out of there, but they're not paying attention to what someone they disagree with says. And that's so important because when you can listen to someone who has a point of view that's different to yours, you can understand how to position your perspective within the context of what they say, which means that they're going to be able to hear you. So understand it from all angles, but the other thing is you... Listen to the language being used by those that you disagree with because language is a really important tool and if you're not very good at that, just sort of pay attention. So the best place to do it is on social media. Pay attention to the conversations on the issues that you care about 
even the ugly ones. You know, I spend a lot of time on Twitter and on LinkedIn following through the conversations and sometimes I'm really shocked by how ugly people are and how critical people are. Um, but uh, I've, got to, I've got to hear it, I've got to face it. Uh, and when you can be objective and you're not in the emotion of it, you can actually listen to the ugly without it being, having a negative impact on you. That's not an always successful strategy because sometimes they do take you out by the knees because you can't be constantly listening to hate all the time without being, being impacted by it. But that's something that I've always been willing to do, confront it, because I think it's important to do it. Um, uh, never, ever, ever use divisive words. So one of, one of our speakers in uh, uh, New Zealand used the word woke on a post recently. And I just sent him a private message Go, you, you're better than that. Never use a word like woke. These, these words have been weapon, weaponized, like words like fake news. They're weaponized. And you use it, it completely diminishes the person that you're re referring to, or the idea that you're referring to. And it doesn't give it space for consideration. So don't use divisive words because people who are paying attention to it, will def you'll definitely use, lose credibility with them. But they're not contributing to social cohesion. And we've all got to start thinking about that. We are so divided all over the world. And it, it, you know, it's going to tear us apart. And we've got, to, we've got to bring people back together. So yeah, um, just be really pow powerful, be clear, be concise in expressing your view. Try and position everything in a way that it, you're going to bring people with you rather than push people away. If you've got very, very strong opinions, just make sure you do the research and go wide. I see a lot of people putting opinions out there and it's only one small piece of the biggest story. You know, even from a climate perspective where people talk about financing the industry, the financial services industry that's financing fossil fuels or they'll talk about the fossil fuel industry and you can tell by the opinions that they're expressing that they actually don't understand how the business works and so by expressing an opinion they or, you know the, the bigger you know when you look at the fossil fuel industry and its role in society on every layer I mean, it runs society. So it was a period of time during the pandemic where, because so few people were driving on the road in California, the state almost went bankrupt because the taxes you pay at the petrol station actually keep the state running. So until that's replaced, it's at the core of our society. And we've got to work out a way to get it out, but taking in all these other factors. So go wide, go deep. If, you, if you're going to have a strong opinion, you've got to have the knowledge to back it up. All right, so go wide, go deep. So it's also a mixture of being, um, having empathy, being compassionate at the same yep. time, rational, objective, and being logic all in one. Just not being too emotional about it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, Andrea, I've got another question for you. As we look into the future, we're all facing big issues. Food insecurity. Um, I don't know whether you know about the chicken issue we have over here. <laughs> and then... <laughs> The health we'll care. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, CJ, CJ here. No more chickens for you. Um, so we have our healthcare crisis and a little bit of education crisis. You heard about all about the Malay speaking thing, cultural challenges, inequality, climate change, and, and just so many others. Why do you think speakers? And I'm saying speakers because we are in a speakers convention. Why do you think speakers have an obligation to speak up on these issues? Yeah. Look, these issues are at the centre of all of our lives and they are going to, and they have been and they are continually going to be impacting our business. So speaking up about the issues that matter and working out the solutions that we need in our societies, whether it's in your own country or, or regionally or globally, I think it's, it's our duty because we are all people of influence because of the work that we do. So we've got to speak up because there's huge issues that we've got to over, overcome or we're not going to make it or we're going to see societal collapse. You know, the food insecurity stories that I'm reading coming out of Malaysia are incredibly alarming. You know, we can joke about the chicken rice in Singapore, but there's real issues. And I know for the last couple of years, a lot of people have really struggled just to feed themselves. And sitting here in Thailand, you know, I was part of a community that was just raising money buying food and just distributing thousands and thousands of bags of food out to people because they lost everything in the pandemic. Everything. They've had to move into workers' camps. They, they've lost their properties. I mean, it's been a devastating time. And that time is going to get worse. And that's the thing that I think... It, we're going to look back at the pandemic as a time of peace because 
moving ahead if we don't get it under control. Like we, we're going to hit 1.5 degrees global warming temporarily a few times in the next few years, right? So for us living in the tropics, that means unlivable heat. So people are going to drop dead in the streets. We saw it in India, people have dropped dead in the recent heat wave. This is going to become a regular thing for all of us. So we've got to start to look at these issues and say, you know, for the undocumented workers, there's so many of those in Asia and Malaysia and across the region who live literally with a piece of tin over their head. They cannot survive outside in that sort of heat. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to prepare for it? How are we going to take care of them? Because it's in our interest to take care of our community. And that was one of the reasons I got involved with um, the charity work in Phuket, because the crime was starting to go up. And people were breaking into people's houses just to steal food. They weren't stealing valuables, they were hungry. So crime goes up. Life is worse for everyone. You think back to Asia 20 years ago, where everywhere you went, there was someone standing outside a building with a garden. And there's still a lot of those, those sort of situations when you go around Asia today, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was 20 years ago. There was no security. People weren't, didn't feel safe, you know, hijackings. Somebody in Malaysia tried to rip my bag off my shoulder from the back of a motorbike bike when I was there. I was probably about 20 years ago, it, and I was really angry afterwards because I thought it was going to be my Arnold Schwarzenegger moment where I could rip him off the bike, but um, I didn't manage to do that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's in all of our interests to speak up, and we've got to drive change. And if the leaders of the country, the politicians of the country, and the media of the country are, are playing the game of division and, and, and just looking for cheap clicks, then we've got to stand up and start fighting against them. You know, the Australian election recently has given me a lot of hope because there's a leadership team in that speaks lang the language of compassion and kindness and unity. And we've got too many dividers. And I know Malaysia's gone through all sorts of troubles in the last few years and from a political perspective. And, you know, it's got, it's got a long way to go, right? But speak up. Be part of the solution. Leave a legacy. Use your influence for good. This is a time where the leaders of the future will rise. And if we sit back and be quiet, we won't, we won't have a chance to sit at the table. So great change is coming, great challenges are coming. How challenging it is, is up to what we do today and every day after this. So have the courage to do it. We need good people to step up. Thanks, Andrea. You know, more than, more than the heat wave, right, I'm more traumatized when it's raining, thinking of all the yeah. flash floods and being a victim myself. I tell you, you if I'm out of the house and, and it rains, I'm just going into panic mode if water's raising yeah. in my house. Did, did, you, did you get flooded in um, the last... Yeah, but um, not in the major flash flood, but it was in 2020. Yeah, so, and yeah. then more and more, more and more, we, we are individually going to experience what's happening versus it being happening to somebody else. You know, so more and more, friends of mine in Australia lost everything in the, in the Queensland floods, you know. So more and more it's happening. And um, it's going to get worse. I mean, some of the stuff I'm reading, you know, in, in the southern hemisphere, what's going on in the in the weather patterns wasn't expected until 2080. The the climate scientists are saying what is happening now wasn't expected until 2050. You know, so it, all of the timelines that we've been shown for years are, you know, 2100. No, it's not. It's now. It's happening now. So it's going to get serious very quickly. So we need to step in and and be drivers for change and be voices for change and help people understand what's coming because I, so many people don't understand or they don't want to understand because it's too scary. But until everyone understands, we're not going to make the changes that we need. So we need to be out there helping people get this message, even though it's a hard message to hear. So equality and diversity, all of those other issues. Food insecurity, you know. There's going to be people who are starving to death in our countries. And, you know, we, we, how can we solve this problem? You know, how can we solve it? We've got to solve it because I don't want to live in a world where I don't care about my neighbour. And, you know, so many people don't care. It's happening over there. Who cares? You know, no, it's coming everywhere. <laughs> it's not just this happening over there. If an American is saying, oh, it's in India and Pakistan, well, this weekend there is a, a mega heat wave with high risk of wet bulb moments, which means you can't sweat anymore, so the organs in your body start to cook. And that's happening this weekend in America. So, you know, like it's here. Let's get ready. Let's face it. Let's educate ourselves. It's a hard thing to face. And if anyone in the room deals, goes through a really, really bad case of eco anxiety or eco grief, reach out to me. We'll set up a call and have a chat about it. I've been there. 
a couple of times. I know what it's like and I can help people come through it. But it's, you've got to face it. The only thing we can do is face it. Because once you face it and you can go through the grief, then you get ready to move into action. I mean, you need people moving into action because that's where you get out of your grief because you, you know that you're part of the, the solution rather than the, being ignorant to the problem, which so many people still are today, which frightens me more than anything, to be honest. That's the thing that scares me. Thanks, Andrea. I mean, having known you over these last few years, and I, I do open that up to the room and say that, yes, if, if there is something that you wish to speak up about and don't have the courage to do so, please buzz Andrea. I know she will definitely put everything aside and listen to you. And, and Andrea, as much as I would love to just speak to you the whole day, I'll be kicked off the stage very soon. So I'm coming very near to the last question that I have for you. Um, and then we're going to open it up for a Q&A if there is any. My last question to you is this. Um, as speakers, we're all speakers here. This question is also, I'm asking for myself, but maybe it may help someone else. What should we stop doing as speakers? And what should we start doing as speakers? All right, I'm going to focus on social media now because I think, I think that would be a, a useful focus for this particular section. Is that, is that cool? Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The first thing is, as speakers, a lot of speakers uh, spend the majority of their time on social media just talking about what they're doing. So it's pictures on stage, speaking, um, it's winning awards, it's all that stuff. And that's fine. But if that's the only thing you're doing. It's about you. It's not about your audience. Now, I know it's important to do it because it's about giving yourself credibility in the eyes of your clients. But it's, it's still about you. It's the sort of stuff that your mum loves to see, right? So, spend more time serving your audience with what you're communicating. Every time on, you're on stage, you're serving your audience. That's the goal, right? You're there to give them something that they can take away and inspire them to do something different in their lives or in their business. So, give to your audience. Set up all of your social media. You know, the vast majority of what you put out there needs to be a message that's going to help them. So, be very specific about who that audience is and then just be up there serving them. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, join the giving economy. So the giving economy is an idea I've been talking about for a very, very long time. We don't, it's not about us. It's not broadcast media, it's social media. So be part of the community, but more importantly, help other people rise. Shine a light on other people. You know, especially in, a, in an association, we've got a lot of junior members, people who are just trying to break through. Give them a boost. Comment on their posts. If they're doing a great video, or they do a great blog, or something fantastic, share it with your audience if it's relevant to your audience. But just literally commenting on what they do, say on LinkedIn or anywhere on social media, um, it just helps, you know. Every time you comment, it gives, the, it gives the post more chance of being seen by other people, because if nobody comments, the posts just kind of disappear away into nothing. But we want to give each other a, a boost. So, be part of the giving economy, the Malaysian Speaking Association, come together, support each other. We're all solopreneurs, right? It's hard to break through. So give help each other. Um, and go deeper. Be informed. Know what's going on. Pay attention. If you don't, and you're not participating, like, you know, the last couple of years we've seen so many people participate out of tune with the moments in time. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, the majority of us were in... We're, we're in a, we were stunned for like a month. And then people are still talking about normal business. And I'm like, why, why would you talk about that now? No one's paying attention to that. Or, or when you know, Russia invaded Ukraine, people were talking, oh, t here's 10 things you can do on LinkedIn to be a star. And I'm like, do you really think anyone's looking at LinkedIn right now and trying to be a star? They're concerned about nuclear war. You know, so be in tune with the moment. You can only do that if you know what's going on. And the fourth one is, be a uniter, not a divider. The world is divided. It's terrible what's going on around the world, every country in the world. We need to come together. We can't solve the problems we've got if we continue to let the divisions uh, rise. We just can't. We've got to work out ways to bring people together. So if you've got some power in you that can help bring people together, and it's the words you use, it's how you present the information. But, yeah, be a uniter. We need us all on board. How's that? Awesome. It reminds me what our president, uh, Johan, mentioned yesterday in his opening speech. He reminded us about what Kevin said, you know, let's make the pie bigger, let's collaborate, let's, uh, let's not compete, but let's go on a collaboration mode. And I think you pretty much summed, it, summed that up for us. 
and I think I've just got about one minute left. Anyway, don't be fast. <laughs> yes, I know. We, we thought thirty minutes would be long, but yeah, we've got about one minute left. Anything to say, Andrea, before I open it up for Q and A? No, no, let's go for some questions. Yeah, questions. So yeah. we've we've got about fifteen minutes for questions. Am I right? No. All right. I thought forty minutes. Forty-five minutes. Sorry, I apparently, I apparently one question at least. One question. Any question? At all from the floor? Any question from the floor? I think you perhaps just stung them into silence, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> calling once, calling twice. Call is there anyone? Is there anyone that um, that just feels that they just they can't do what I'm talking about? They just don't feel that you know. How many hands which would go up if you know? I can't see you, uh, but how many hands go up? Who who just doesn't have that courage to? Oh, um, okay, let's just answer Andrea first. Any hands up for that question? Uh, Andrea, could you do, repeat your question? Just, yeah, how many people would put their hand up and say, no, there's no way, I just can't do it, I can't stand up and speak up on these big Who issues? Who can't speak up on big issues? That's the question. Who feels it's not within them to do that? Oh, pretty cool. I think everyone can stand up and speak. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, no hands are raised. Oh, okay, perhaps let's change the question. Who has the courage to speak up? Okay. Everyone? Um, almost everyone. Almost everyone. Awesome. Some, some hands are perhaps just not adjusted to the level yet. Um, <laughs> we have one question. So we have time for one question. Let yep. me ask this question of Andre. Oh, sorry, Prasad, please go ahead. Well, actually, I had a Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, then we can ask two questions, can we? Uh, I'm okay. Um, it depends on Subhuti. Subhuti is the timekeeper. We are just like trying to hijack the whole event. Okay, so I I'm going to ask one question. Uh, Andrea, what is the most courageous thing that you have done as a speaker? Oh, I, I, I don't think there's any one example of that. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly just pushing myself out there and... and you know, I'm nervous every single time because I never know what the response is going to be. But I'm like, you know, if it doesn't work, that's all right. I'll just come back and try again and learn from it. But it's pretty consistent. Um, you know, just the first time you get on stage is 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 the time is a time of courage. I remember doing a big event for LinkedIn and I was absolutely shaking in my shoes. But and and the audience wasn't giving me anything back, which is usual in Asia, right? Everyone's just looking at me with a blank face, and I was like, oh god, I must have stuffed that up. And um, after the after the event was over, all of these people flooded me, and not only not only did they love it, people were cuddling me and kissing me in Asia. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, maybe I've got something to say that's worth hearing. So that was uh, the first one. But yeah, no, it's it's every time I'm, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do anything Here's anywhere. Here's some kisses from you from Asia today. <laughs> all right, we've got one more question, Prasad. Could we have your question? One more question, Andrew, before we wrap up for today. Okay, as much as the uh, hype on social media uh, that we have today, we also have to acknowledge the fact that social media is also corrosive in terms of yep. uh, you know uh, creating this unity as well as polarization in the society. Right? People get triggered a lot faster on social media, and uh, people are, you know, uh, I am right and the world is wrong as far as uh, social media is concerned, even though in reality their personality could be very different as opposed to the online personality, right? So uh, like earlier you mentioned that we should be a voice for unity and whatnot, right? Uh, how do we, how do we uh, manage that at least? Yeah, so that goes back to the really know what you're talking about and looking at all angles of the stories so that you go in and you're really informed. Uh, so the, the, I, I watch people pull people apart when they, when they only have that one piece of the story, right? So be, be informed. Um, look, the dividers on social media have an outsized presence compared to their physical presence. They're, they're, you know, every town's got a bully, right? So what's happened is we've got this global platform where all of the bullies have come together and they're, and they're being a voice. So what we need to do is we need to drown them out because there's more of us than them. So uh, the, the other thing is, don't be triggered by people doing stupid stuff on social media or stuff that you don't agree with or just move past them. Too many people are responding to what people are posting and it's like, is it worth responding? 
Like sometimes I will put a comment, you know, someone will share misinformation, and I'll, I'll just put a link and just say, just sharing this with love, you know, it's just another point of view. You know, we had the pandemic, that stupid video that came out at the beginning of the pandemic, and there was so much information in that that was completely wrong, and, and it was, and was used out of context. Like, um, the, what's her name, the author of Harry Potter, that she had a doctor that helped her get through COVID. Yeah, J.K. Rowling's. And she had a doctor that helped her get through uh, the COVID right early in it. And this doctor appeared in this video and it was completely out of context with his appearance. So that was the first sign for me that we were dealing with a lot of rubbish. So look for the signs. It's like if something says, watch this before they take it down, that's a sign that you're going to be facing some misinformation. So it's part of paying attention. But yeah, don't, don't, don't get too excited about people. People making a fool of themselves, doing stupid things, saying stupid things. Just say, all right, off you go, have a good time. And just be focused on what you're all there for. And use the right language and, and bring people together. So yes, the dividers have an outsized presence, but we need to silence them. We, and we never will, they're always going to be around. But we can reduce their impact by us speaking up. You know, those, those famous quotes, uh, you know, I can't even remember who said them, but you know, when we stay silent, in, in the face of a, a crisis, then we're, we're implicit in the crisis, right? So it's our duty to our fellow humans to speak up, I believe, yeah. All right, so um, before I get dragged off the stage, I better wrap it up. So um, <laughs> on behalf of Malaysian Association of Professional Speakers, thank you so much, Andrea, for your uncommon courage, and thank you for giving me courage. And I speak for everyone when I say um, we really appreciate you taking the time off on a Sunday morning. I know you had a celebration and a blast yesterday, so getting up early, getting you are one hour behind us, right? So yeah. getting up early, preparing for us. I, I, I didn't drink too much wine last night, but I did win a six litre bottle of champagne. <laughs> yeah, I met and we, but yes, thank you so much, Andrea, for doing this. Till we meet again, lots of kisses and hugs, and I love see you again woman. soon, Andrea. Thank you so much. See you guys. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much.